first app I want to load is my desk reservation application. Now, this one is optimized for the mobile phone because most people will be accessing it there. And I'm using a lot of those concepts that we talked about. So as you can see, it's a very simple layout. Now, one thing that I didn't really mention as far as the design standpoint is to make sure that you are interjecting some kind of nice visuals into your app. So that's something you can see that I'm doing right here at the top. I just have an image of a computer and a desk since this is a desk reservation application. Um, also, I'm communicating to the user here that they are logged in as themselves. So I'm saying welcome back and I'm dynamically pulling in the current logged in user's name. Below, you see I am using those tabs we talked about. So from here, this is where I would go if I wanted to see the dashboard, which I'm on now, see all of my appointments. So I click that, that takes me to another screen. And on this screen, you see I'm using tabs even further. So I'm a big fan of tabs because it really helps me it helps you have a clean UI. So I can filter here by upcoming. And notice that I'm specifying which tab I have selected with this underline. And then previous. So when I click previous, I can see all of the different reservations that I have booked so far. And then, of course, I can click book down here. And that will take me to another screen where I can reserve a desk. And you'll notice I'm another concept I'm doing here to keep it clean is I'm leveraging kind of a multi-screen approach. So rather than have me select the date I want to and then the desk that I want to have at the same screen and all that, I'm breaking it out into different pieces. So I have a simple calendar control here that I can move from month to date here. I can select the date that I want to reserve the desk for, and this could be in one date or it can be multiple. And then the time slot that I want to reserve it for. So maybe I need this one all day. So we'll say from eight to five. Now I'll guide the user with this uh, design through a process. So I'll click continue. And now this is gonna take me to another screen where I can select the type of desk that I want. So when I go there, and let's see, yeah. It'll take me to this screen so I can see all the desks that I have. Another thing that we're doing, I mentioned pop-ups before. So how do we integrate pop-ups into our app? And this is a perfect example. So I have a list of desks that I could choose from. What if I want to see where in the building that desk is located? So I have this little information icon. And when I click that, that's actually opening up a pop-up. There's an example of what that could look like. Notice I'm kind of graying out the background a bit, and I'm making this image of the office layout in the forefront, right? So I can see that this desk is right here, and then know that I want to choose that desk and move on to my next step and confirm. And the last thing that you'll see from the tips that I just showed you that I'm doing is I'm giving that confirmation message that my desk was reserved. And notice the other thing that just happened. It was pretty quick, but I got the confirmation message. I didn't click anything, but it routed me back to the homepage so that I could see all of my reservations. So how is that happening? That was a lot that I just showed. And let me break down some of this for you. Now, first thing for that success message, because this is really the easiest to accomplish. With Power Apps, our applications are broken out into screens. So every different action that we would be taking in the application, we can break that out into a screen. If I click on the left-hand side here, New Screen, we have something called Screen Templates. One of the templates that we have available to us is this success template. So I can actually click that, and that will create a new screen with a simple label here to allow me to customize the success message and an icon with a check mark just a good visual indicator that whatever action that i had was successful so all i have to do if i want to have a success screen is add one of those templates in here customize my message so i could just change the label there and then i just have to tell it to go to that screen after my action was successful so in that case, I would navigate to my success screen after I click the confirm button. So what we can do is click on confirm and we can go to its on select property. And you'll see that I'm patching, which is just writing this data to my data source. And then after I'm done, I'm just using a function called navigate to take the user to that success screen. So pretty simple, but goes a long way to making your apps more intuitive and better to use for your users. 
Right, next thing I want to show is that pop-up, because these pop-up dialog boxes can be used in several instances. So I was showing it here to pull up a map. Another great use case for this is if I wanted to have a gallery of items and wanted to allow users to delete the items. Typically, you don't want to just let them click a button and instantly delete it. You might want to pop up like we see commonly to say, are you sure you want to delete this item, yes or no? That's something that we can leverage pop-ups for as well. So how do we do that? Now, it's pretty simple. In here, I have a gallery, and that's where I'm surfacing up these desks. If I expand the gallery, you'll see that all I did was I added an icon into the gallery here for the little, in this icon, if you want to know what it is, you can go to insert icons. And that's one of these built-in icons here, and there's one called information. Um, so that will show here, and you can select that information icon if you want to use that in one of your applications. It's that one right there. So all I did for the pop-up is on the click of this button in the on select, you see that I'm using an update context formula. What that does is allow me to define a variable to use in this application. So I'm defining a variable called show map. And you see that I'm setting the value. So I'm going to separate that with a colon. And I'm setting it to I have a exclamation point and then show map. What that little piece of code there is doing is it's saying show map is going to be a Boolean. So it's going to be a yes or no value. So whatever that value is, do the opposite of what it was. So if it was true, set it to false. And if it was false, set it back to true. So you can do that simply by putting an exclamation point in front of your variable name. Now that alone isn't doing much. Now, if we look here on the left-hand side in our tree view and scroll up a bit, you see I have a group called group map. This is actually the pop-up information. So really all I did here to add this pop-up is on my screen, I went to insert and icons. And first, I added a rectangle control because if you recall, let me just play this real quick. When I clicked on that, the background was shaded. So how I did that is I kind of just tricked it. I added a rectangle icon. So that's what this is right here. And I've set the color of it to this kind of opaque gray. So if I go to custom, you can define the opacity here so that you can kind of see through it. So that's all that I did. And I've also I've added an image control to show my map. And I've added an icon so that when I click that icon, I can close out of the pop up. And what I did is all three of these objects, I've grouped them into group an item. You can just click on the item in the tree view, hold down your shift key and click the other item that you want to group. And then you'll see the three dots and you can select group to group those together. Now that I have that in a group, You'll notice that on this icon, I'm using that same function I had on the information icon. I'm saying update context, show map to the opposite. So that's going to set that back to false if it was true when I have it selected. Now pulling this all together, as you can imagine, now if I click on this group I created and I click the drop down in the properties pane, there's a property called visible. So all I'm going to do is set the visible property to my variable show map. That way, that's going to be a true or a false. So as I click the information, it'll show. And as I click the X, it'll hide again. So this same concept you can use, again, for different scenarios like confirming delete, showing additional information, whatever it might be.